Michael's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Calgary, Alberta, for the repose of the soul of her husband who died October 26, 2008. Also for living and deceased relatives and friends, for the return of family members to their faith, for healing and health problems, and for peace in the world, and in thanksgiving for the televised daily mass. The second is Rosemary McCallum from Wetasquin, Alberta, in honor of their mother, Mary Claire Dietrich's 92nd birthday, and for the living and deceased members of the Charles Dietrich and Mary Claire Glavin families. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Let us begin by acknowledging our sins and so preparing ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling place pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from a letter of Paul to the Ephesians. My brothers and sisters, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even mention among you, as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving, be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things, the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be associated with them. For once you were in darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. The word of the Lord. Fruit in its season, and 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to God. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he had laid hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When Jesus said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise this incident of the woman healed of her 18-year-long crippling ailment only is told in Luke's gospel. But there's another incident very similar to it that's told in the gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. It's similar because it happens on the Sabbath in the synagogue, and there's a healing by Jesus that causes consternation. In this case, though, it's a man with a withered hand. And there are some differences because it says that the Pharisees, and Luke adds the scribes, are watching Jesus to try to get something on him because he was saying and doing things they didn't like. He was spending too much time with prostitutes and tax collectors. And while he said that it was because they were the ones that needed the physician, sinners, they suspected 
that his attitude toward the law was not all that they wanted it to be. He was not as law-abiding as he should have been. And here was a chance to show that he was not law-abiding. But Jesus turns the tables on them. He does the healing, and then he shames them. He puts them to shame because he compares what they think should be done with this man with the withered hand and what they would do for their own animals on the Sabbath. And they are shamed, and they are angry. They go out and plot to kill him. Now, in this incident with the crippled woman, the reaction is a little difficult. It's the reaction of the leader of the synagogue. And he's indignant because the healing has happened on the Sabbath, but he doesn't talk to Jesus. He talks to the other people there. He says, there are six days. You can come and get yourself healed. But on the Sabbath day, it's not the day for healing. It's not the day to do any work. And we recognize him right away. He's what we call a martinet. Just the same today as 2,000 years ago. Somebody who thought that rules were everything and the important thing was getting people to stick to the rules. And it's that that Jesus attacks. Here's a miracle's just happened. A woman's been saved for an 18-year-old ailment, and you're concerned about the rules. Because, you know, let's, let's be clear on it, the Sabbath was extremely important. It was the gift to God of God to the Jews. It was a sign that they were the chosen people. It was an invitation to join God in his divine rest, to be with God for a day. And no work was to be done on it. There was even in the old days a death penalty attached to working on the Sabbath. The thing was, over the years, they put so many rules and regulations around it and what work meant and what it was to work, what you had to do or what you couldn't do, and they'd forgotten what it was for. They'd forgotten that rules are for people, to make people better. Now, these stories in the Gospels are told not to show that the Christian religion is better than the Jewish religion. Not at all. They're to warn Christians about certain attitudes that are especially a temptation to the law-abiding, to the devout. The temptation to forget what it's all about. You know, if you read the scriptures, you read the gospels, Jesus spends more time telling devout people, church goers, synagogue goers, what's wrong with them than he does telling sinners what's wrong with them. And he's harsher about it. Why? Jesus has a mission. The mission of Jesus is to go out and get sinners, to forgive sinners, and they're standing in his way. They're standing in his way because they've forgotten the purpose. And in the Ephesians, the epistle says to these people, yes, live a good and a pure and a true life. Be, live a very good life, but never forget that the basis is the love of Christ who sacrificed himself in your place because you were sinners and he wants everyone to be saved. That is the mission of Christ. That is the mission of the church. That is the mission of those who follow Jesus. 
not to make sure that people stick to the rules, but to make sure that the rules do what God made the rules to do. That is to make people better, to heal them, and to save them. Let us take a moment now to mention those intentions for which we wish to pray at this Eucharist. Let us pray first of all for the church throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for all the peoples of the earth. For peace and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for this parish community, this community joined with us through television, for all the intentions that have been sent in asking for our prayers. And let us pray for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Most merciful and generous God, hear these prayers and answer them in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, please pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us. And may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Amen. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself, and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into your, the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to hear again any reading, gospel, or homily from this week's Masses, visit our website at www.canadiandailymass.com. That's www.canadiandailymass, one word, dot com.